The president is a policy maker. Now, all government institutions actually make policy. The legislative branch makes the laws. The president is going to try to influence Congress to create laws that they want. They use the bully pulpit or the visibility and prestige of the office to mobilize the people. And when a bill gets passed by both houses of Congress, it's up to the president to sign or veto those laws. The executive branch creates policy in another way. The power of the president to issue executive orders can be found in Article 2 of the Constitution. It's also referred to as the ordinance power. An executive order is a directive issued by the president that manages the operations of the federal government and has the force of law. The president uses executive orders to help enforce the laws. The United States has a budget, an amount of money it's going to spend. But unlike my budget, the United States States will spend trillions of dollars. The fiscal calendar starts in October and ends in September. What allocations make it to the budget? That's going to be determined by the legislative branch and the executive branch working together. Here's an oversimplified version of the budgetary process. First, the federal agencies are going to send money requests to the Office of Management and Budget. There's tons of agencies like the Marines, the Western Hemisphere Affairs, the FEC, the Post Office, the FBI. The President and the Office of Management and Budget are going to compile all these requests until they can create one single budget proposal. So now the Executive Branch has this list of money that they say they need in order to carry out all the laws that Congress has passed. The President will submit this budget proposal to Congress. All right, here's the president grabbing the budget and taking it over to Congress. Now don't forget, Congress has the power of the purse, the power of the Gucci purse. Congress is going to review this budget through appropriation committees. Congress is going to debate and vote during floor action. The budget must pass through both houses of Congress. Then it goes back for the president to sign or veto. All right, we passed the budget, no government shutdown, what, what? Many presidents want to be remembered for some big changes in American society. They want a legacy. That kind of encompasses their presidential program. A presidential program is a series of legislation that a president wants to turn into law. As far as working in the government, the president is the most powerful individual in the country. But that power is not unlimited. Presidents face adverse reaction. Sometimes the public doesn't like their ideas. The White House will often leak information on purpose, so it gets out to the media and they can hear how the public responds to it. No time! There's never any time! I don't have time to study! I'm sure the presidents would think Jesse Spano's right. There's not enough time to give attention to all the problems that deserve it. Most presidents actually work 90 hours a week. That's more than two full-time jobs. But that's still not enough time. They have to give speeches, meet with Congress leaders, travel to other countries, meet with military leaders, welcome dignitaries to the White House, go to campaign fundraisers. There is so much they have to do, there's not enough time to do it. Unexpected crisis. We never really know when there's going to be some type of military attack or national disaster that takes place. I can't imagine there's many people out there like, man, I sure hope I'm the president that gets to deal with the Great Depression. Hope there's millions unemployed and hungry looking to me for help. That would be fun. Budget restraint. Congress must pass the budget and laws in order for the president to sign them. So the president needs allies in Congress or else they can't get things done that they want. Divided government is when the president is from a different political party than the majority of at least one house of Congress. As you can see, the president has a lot of constitutional power that helps them shape policy, but they still have many obstacles they must face. Kind of like me in the classroom. Oh man, I gotta go write lesson plans. I'm trying to make vids. Man, there's not enough time. <laughs>